everyone wants to know how much semester at sea really costs and today i'm going to be telling y'all exactly how much i spent on sas and when i say exactly i mean it literally i'm going to be telling y'all how much i spent on the ship how much i ate not how much i ate how much i spent on food transportation how much i got in scholarships so y'all are gonna know everything Welcome to my first video post SAS. I'm in my room at home in DFW, not on the ship anymore, not in my cabin. But as y'all know, I'm going to be telling y'all literally everything that I spent on SAS. Everyone is different, so it is nice to get different points of view when it comes to what people spent on the voyage. And I documented my whole SAS voyage, so y'all can go and watch pretty much every single thing that I did. And now I'm going to tell you how much it costs. I'm going to break this video up into parts. So the categories are how much I spent before embarking on the ship, how much I spent in each country while I was traveling, how much I spent on the ship itself, how much I got in scholarships, and at the very end, I'm going to give you the grand total with everything taken into account. Before we get into the video, I do want to say that I'm making this video purely for informative purposes. I want to be transparent with you guys and give you the full reality of what it's like to study abroad with Semester at Sea. Everyone's situation is different and you can definitely make this program more affordable. And I will talk about scholarships at the end of this video. I got a lot of my program covered. You can do it too and make your voyage affordable. Stay tuned for that at the end. Okay, so I have my computer with all of my numbers here. I kept track of everything that I spent before the voyage on here so this includes the application fee of 75 dollars which is non-refundable my travel shots which were 675 dollars i had to get a new passport for 130 dollars i got prescriptions with those were covered by my insurance so those were zero dollars i paid my a thousand dollar deposit which is refundable for up to 90 days before the voyage but you have to pay that well in advance i signed up for a payment plan for 50 dollars and then you get a $250 ship credit when you're on the ship. Um, so I got like $200 free basically. My Kenya visa, which was $53.04. My India visa, which was $222. I struggled getting that one a lot. So I signed up through Tabriza, which is a company that helps you secure your visas. So that's why that one was a lot more expensive. I also signed up for the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, which is like a national honor society program. I know you probably get those emails about all of those different companies, but Semester at Sea has a scholarship through them. And so I just paid the $100 to become a member and it ended up paying off, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. But that was $100, which I paid. So I included that in my pre-embarkation costs. And then lastly, my flight to get to the ship across the world. I used miles for this, so I ended up only paying $5, uh, but it would have been like 800 and something if I didn't have miles to use. Pre-embarkation costs comes to a total of $2,310.04. Already a good chunk of money before you get on the ship. And then I have another section for pre-embarkation costs, which is things that I bought on my own for semester at sea, so like your luggages, travel backpack, stuff like that, all the stuff that you'll need for four months. I kept track of all of that and it came out to a total of $967.46. I think this number is so high because I did buy two new suitcases. I bought a travel backpack. And I also bought a lot of technology because I do vlog and stuff like that. And then just semester at sea specific things like sea bands, a scrubba, um, your laundry detergent, travel adapters. You definitely do not need to spend that much. Um, you don't have to go buy new suitcases and all that stuff. But this is what I did. If you want to know more specifically what went into this category, I have a full blog up on my website. I'll link it below and I have everything listed of every single item that I brought and I have a packing list on there as well. So you can go check that out. And then you also have to pay your tuition before you get on the ship. So this is strictly what Semester at Sea will charge you. The tuition for everyone is $21,279. My cabin was $10,045. This number can be cheaper if you get a different cabin type. And our fuel cost was 
1550 For tuition, room and board, and our fuel cost, it's a total of $32,874 that you will pay to semester at sea. I did not pay $32,000 to go on SAS. Um, I paid a lot less than this. And that's why I want to reiterate to y'all that scholarships can help you so, so much. Just know it's a big, scary number, $32,000. But so many people on my voyage got tons of scholarships and did not pay anywhere near that number. Okay, next category is how much I spent in each port while traveling. This is probably my most asked question for good reason. It really varies per person and Semester at Sea doesn't really have too much of a breakdown on this. So I'm going to tell you all what I spent in each country and then I'm going to break it down into categories like hotels, food, transportation everything like that. So our first port, Amsterdam, where we embarked, I'm not going to include this because I was with my parents and I was only there for like a day. I booked independent travel for every single country except for India and if you are booking independent travel, you will spend much less than if you were to book through the field programs through Semester at Sea just because those programs are so are so expensive they're not even for the entire time that you're in the country so days one and six or days one and five you'll be spending a little bit of cash as well in addition to that expensive field program i don't want to go too much into it but i will talk more about independent travel versus field programs in my semester at cq and a so stay tuned for that that'll be my next video probably okay i'm just gonna be listing out tons of numbers i'll put them on the screen so first port portugal for our accommodation we got an airbnb it was, i spent 70 dollars for food and drinks i spent 85 dollars and 25 cents for excursions and tours 33 dollars souvenirs and gifts 38 dollars 25 cents transportation this includes trains buses flights everything like that $20.25 and for clothes I spent $12. So in total for Portugal I spent $258.80. Next up Morocco. For accommodations I can't give you an exact number because I booked an all-inclusive tour that included hotels. So food and drinks $57.90. Tours, excursions $263.66. Souvenirs and gifts $19.50. Transportation, $0. It was included in my tour and $30 for clothes. So in total for Morocco, I spent $374.16. Spain, for accommodations, I spent $128.16. Food and drinks, $68.80. Excursions and tours, $46.26. Souvenirs and gifts, $40.12. Transportation, $127.83. Close $97.88. In total for Spain, I spent $509. Next up, Croatia. Accommodations, I only spent $24 because we stayed in a hotel for one night. Food and drinks, $97.20. Excursions and tours, $154.86. Souvenirs and gifts, $79.29. Transportation, $60.51. Close $0. Croatia total, $416.66. Greece, accommodations, $89.76. Food and drinks, $69.40. Excursions and tours, $122.25. Souvenirs and gifts, $96.90. Transportation, $129.23. And clothes, $33.90. <sighs> okay, in total, $541.44 for Greece. Cyprus, accommodation, $70.65. Food and drinks, $48.35. Excursions and tours, $42.97. Souvenirs and gifts, $73.72. Transportation, $22. And clothes, zero. So I spent $257.69 in Cyprus. Jordan, accommodation, zero. Again, I booked an all-inclusive tour. Food and drinks, $29.53. Excursion slash tours, $626.08. The tour itself was $525, and then I had to pay for some entrance fees. Souvenirs and gifts, $89.59. Transportation, $18.80. Clothes, 5 bucks. Total for Jordan, $778. Um, Kenya, accommodation, zero another all-inclusive tour food and drinks eight dollars 84 cents 
Excursions and tours, $540. Souvenirs and gifts, $80.75. Transportation, $8. Clothes, zero. For Kenya, I spent $637.60. For India, this is where I bought the field program, so accommodation was included with the field program. For food and drinks, I spent $3.63. Excursions and tours was $749.85. So the field program was 712 for three days and two nights. And then I had an eight hour tour on day one for like $30, which is really good. So those two tours, that was the total. Souvenirs and gifts was $100. Transportation was $4. Clothes was zero. And then I had some leftover cash that I had taken out of an ATM. So I used that for a tip for my cabin steward. India total was $889.74. Definitely because I booked the field program through Semester at Sea. And I also bought a lot of gifts for people here, so yeah. Then our last port, Dubai, which I was only there for two days because that's when I flew back home to the US. So accommodation was $50, food and drinks $41.15, excursions and tours $0, souvenirs and gifts $17.98, Transportation, $32.83, clothes, zero. Total for Dubai, $141.96. Finally done with all those numbers. The total that I spent for in-country travel was $4,295.75. <clears throat> so that was for 10 countries, average five days each. And if y'all wanna know like specifics of where I stayed, what I did in each country, just go watch all of my videos because you can see everything there. So next up is how much I spent on the ship. So we got billed four times throughout the voyage. So once at the end of every month. These bills did include another fuel surcharge. We paid $1,550 before we got on the voyage for fuel. There is a fuel surcharge for if they need more fuel, if it gets more expensive, anything like that. I think that typically gets added on during the voyage. But we got notified of ours before we embarked because gas was more expensive at the time but we paid this during the voyage it was a 975 dollar fuel surcharge so it came out to like nine dollars and 26 cents a day so that's a big extra cost that you can't really account for because you don't you have no idea um what it's gonna be or if you're even gonna have one um we got notified beforehand so we did know and expect that for our monthly bills. So my first bill was $77.96. This one is low because I had a $250 ship credit. So I talked about that at the beginning of the video. If you sign up for a payment plan months in advance before your voyage takes off, they will give you a ship credit. I think there was one for $500. I missed that deadline, so I got a $250 one. I basically got $200 for free. So if I didn't have that $250 ship credit, it would have been a lot higher. It would have been over $300. My second bill was $331.99. Third bill, $387.95. And my fourth bill was $383.49. So in total, all my bills cost $1,181.39. So this includes that $975 fuel fee. So... I would say I did pretty good at not overspending on the ship because this includes any SAS merch that you bought, food, if you book stuff at the spa, I did not do that. Anything that you spend on the ship, this is where it gets charged. Then after we disembarked, I had to get home. So I did have to book a flight home. I booked that flight on Emirates and I would highly recommend doing that because you get two checked bags for free, which is key when you're going on SAS because you will have two checked bags most likely. So my flight home was $856. I did not book this before the voyage. I think most people did just because you, it's a little bit hard to do so when you're on the ship with no Wi-Fi. Um, but I waited to do this because I didn't know if I wanted to travel a little bit after or what. And I booked it probably a month or two in advance. Okay, now I'm gonna tell y'all how much I got in scholarships for my voyage. So Semester at Sea has a list of all the scholarships that they offer, so you can look at that on their website. And then once applications open, they'll let you know what you qualify for and then you can apply for those. So I did each one that I qualified for. And you can get outside scholarships as well and from your home university. So from Semester at Sea, I got the Student Assistant Scholarship I was one of the student vloggers on my voyage, 
So this was $4,000. I also got a merit scholarship of $1,200 and a need scholarship of $500. These are the ones that I got directly from Semester at Sea. My biggest scholarship was through the National Society of Collegiate Scholars. This is one of the scholarships listed on Semester at Sea's website, but you have to be a member in order to qualify. I knew I was going to do Semester at Sea for a couple years, and so I saw this and, and I figured might as well become a member, so that's another scholarship that I can qualify for. And that definitely paid off. You have to pay $100 to become a member, and I included that in my pre-embarkation costs. I paid that like two years before I got on the ship. Then the scholarships opened and I had to write a pretty long essay for this one, I think, but they give out four $5,000 scholarships and two $10,000 scholarships. And I got one of the $10,000 ones. Paying that $100 fee definitely paid off. I put a lot of work into writing my essay for these scholarships, so I'm really proud that I was able to cover a lot of my program costs. So that's one of the number one pieces of advice that I can give to y'all to make your voyage more affordable is to just apply for every scholarship. Even if you think that you're not gonna get it, I didn't think I was gonna get some of the ones from Semester at Sea that I did and every, every little amount helps. I spent so much time applying for scholarships during my spring semester, during spring of last year. So a semester before my voyage, I was writing essays constantly. I wrote so many essays for so many different scholarships. So if you want to bring that big $32,000 program cost down, you definitely can because I did and I had friends that did, so it's possible. And then I also got two scholarships from my home university. I go to Texas Tech University and they are an affiliate with SAS. What this means is that it's easier for your scholarships to transfer over. So since I transferred to Texas Tech, I receive a scholarship every semester because of my GPA when transferring in. Since Tech is an affiliate, this scholarship transferred really easily. This was $2,000 that I got transferred and Tech also has a competitive study abroad scholarship and we had to write a bunch of essays for these and get letters of recommendation from our professors. And from this, I got $9,000. So in total for my home university, I got $11,000, which is a huge help. So definitely check with your schools, see what scholarships they offer for study abroad. If not, visit your financial aid office, see if they have any grants that they're offering because your program cost is gonna be way higher. Um, well, depending on what school you go to. But for me, my program cost is a lot higher than it normally is because I pay in-state tuition. Um, and now I'm paying for a study abroad programs. So if your school is not an affiliate, your scholarships can still transfer. I can't say that for every single school, but it is possible. It's just not as quick as a process, I think. In total, I got $26,700 in scholarships. So now that big program cost is not as scary as it once was. And you can do the same, you just have to put in the work. You have to be writing those essays and doing everything that you can. In total, t I paid $17,224 to Semester at Sea. I did not pay the entire $32,000 since some of my scholarships were from SAS, so it automatically applied to my account. My scholarships from Texas Tech got direct deposited into my bank account, so that's why I had to pay that $17,000 number, but that was just more credit card points for me, so that was nice because SAS does not charge a fee to pay with the credit card, which I thought was really weird. Most companies do when you're paying online, especially in big amounts like that. So I use my credit card for every single payment. So with my tech scholarships, what I actually ended up paying out of my pocket was $6,224 for semester at sea, which is insane. I, ne I never thought that I would be able to get my costs that low. That is lower than I would pay at my home university. And I'm living on a ship, so. Um, I mean, I am in state, but. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep that in because I think it's gonna confuse people. Moral of the story is I paid $6,224 to Semester at Sea for my program costs. Now I'm going to give y'all the grand total of what I paid. 
Um, y'all have a pretty good idea because I gave y'all all of the numbers, but if I would have not applied for any scholarships, nothing, the grand total for me would have been $42,000.484. Since I applied for a lot of scholarships, the total that I paid for my study abroad program, four months, 11 countries, was $15,834.64. So that is still a lot of money, but for it being the most expensive study abroad program, I was able to get that number a lot lower. I did want to talk a little bit about um, Semester at Sea has this cost of participation um, chart on their website. So for my voyage, what they anticipated the total cost to be for my cabin was $41,624. So that is pretty close to what the cost would have been had I not gotten any scholarships because mine was 42, 42 400 with no scholarships. So that is num that number is pretty close. I'll put it up on the screen, but they give you all of the program fees and then like additional expenses. So airfare 2000, I would say that's pretty accurate. Visas 750, I don't think that's accurate. Um at least for my voyage, we only needed two. Immunizations 500. I paid a little bit more than this because I did get two extra shots that weren't required. Personal and field programs, $4,500. That is pretty accurate. I spent $4,295. Um, but if you're buying majority field programs, that number is going to be a lot higher. So I would say that number is a little bit more on the independent side. Local transportation, $500. I think I spent more than this, but I did travel to different cities and most of the ports. So that is why you can stay in that local city and you won't spend as much as I did. Books, $500, I spent 20. I bought one online textbook and the rest of them I found free PDFs. So go do that, because I spent $20. I would say that it is an accurate reflection for the average person on semester at sea. You know, there are groups that wanna be more budget friendly and, and spend less than $500 in port. And there's also groups that are not on a budget and will spend a thousand plus for every single port. It really just depends on the person and you will find people that have the same budget as you. But that is the end of the video. I gave you all the grand total. Um, again, this video is for informative purposes only. I truly wanna be transparent with y'all and help anyone that's going on semester at sea in the future. I hope to give you an accurate, realistic number of what to save, how much to expect to spend in port and everything like that. So I hope this video was helpful. This took a lot of work. I wrote down every expense in every single country and kept track of everything. And I've been sitting here talking forever. My throat is getting dry, listing out all those numbers. So I will be filming a semester at sea Q and A as well. Leave some comments on some questions that y'all have below. I'll probably do two parts, so if I don't get to your question in the first one, I'll get to it in the second one. But yeah, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Subscribe. I have some travel content coming up soon. I took a spring break trip, and I have a trip in May coming up as well, so bye.